Thank you. So we can maybe just start because like he's taking a little while. All right. So we just start. Let's do it. And he'll, he'll probably just come in like when he comes in because I do not want to take too much longer. Uh, okay, so we're starting. All right, Atroxa. We know what this does. <laughs> S tier. I don't know. I don't consider that card S tier anymore. Like I, 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 I feel like just proliferating at the end of each turn is probably still good enough to be A tier because it's really annoying. But True. Like, okay. Are we talking about the decks that you could build, or what the de what the commander is on its own? Because that really depend that changes things up a lot. It's a little bit of everything. It's like how good the card is, <sighs> how the commander decks are built. Like because I consider like. Like, when you're talking about this card compared to, like, Chu Lane, like, it makes Chu Lane, like, Chu Lane makes this card look like but it's baby out. There's, but those are different types of decks. Atroxa is playing either, usually, Infect or, like, Walkers matter. Mm -hmm. And Which both... I think even in, in, even in a casual setting, it's just not as good as it used to be. Like, Atroxa has just significantly gotten worse. Because most decks that are playing creatures have the advantage. In but we're also playing, like, the best spells color combinations. Oh, I totally get that. But I'm just saying, like, I think it has just such a disadvantage. Like, interaction is so good right or, now. Or it's just I a plus one counter deck. And all, as we know, plus one counter shenanigan decks are can be pretty strong, too. Right. But, like, I feel like even for that, like, there might be other better commanders now. I don't know. I have to think uh, about I it. think I, she so would be like... the best. Like, unless you're talking five color, I think she is the best if you're hitting any of those sub themes because she just but works like, for them. We're just considering, like... I consider Thrasios and Chu Lane and things like the Chun Dragon and like I, Golos. Like I cannot put Atroxa and Golos in the same tier. Like that's no. I I, 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 I mean I I can. I, I I don't think Atroxa is that good. You're you're minus you're minusing one. Well, it's again it's like because of what you're doing in the deck. If we're doing a little bit of everything, is that she's helping whatever strategy that the deck wants to go through in a really powerful way, whether it be like, walkers, whether that be plus one counters, whether that be infect. There like isn't really a better... Like I, no, I get that. I'm just saying, like, what the strategy is trying to do, I just don't think is that great anymore. Like, I, I think that we've gotten beyond, like, planeswalkers or, like... I, I just think that the, it's we've just gotten so much better than that. Like, I, I think that her deck strategy... Like, decks like her and Kalia have just really fallen from being as good oh. as they used to be. Like, I, I think when you look at, like, cards that have been printed in the last three years, like, trying to compare her to, like, Urza or something, like, she's just not doing it for me anymore. I think it's a great card. Mm. I think it goes in a lot of Planeswalker decks. So, I don't think it could be put anywhere lower than A. But when we're comparing it to, like, either, like, CDH commanders or, like, you know, a card as broken as, like, something like Chulane or Golos, like... I cannot see Atroxa standing up to that. Like, regardless of it being played in a deck, the kind of deck that you're building around it, the the viability of the card, like, I think it's definitely an A. Like, compared to the way decks are now, if this was, like, five years, like, four years ago, Atroxa would be an easy S tier. Well, Kalia would be S tier. Like, uh, less my final argument being that plus one counter decks are still the seventh most played commander deck of all time. So yeah, but, do that as you will, with what we will. Right, Does that mean right, that every right. other strategy above it is the only thing that could be S tier, or is there only gonna be like right. four S tier decks? Yeah, I, well, I'm just saying, like it, it's it's still a great strategy, but like, I'm just saying, like I feel like so many other strategies are just so much better now. Like we get a lot of plus one plus one stuff, but like that's heavy committal to the board, and it's like. I don't know. Like, putting a lot of counters on certain creatures is whatever. Like, I think token making and landfall and, like, wheels and playing creatures in general and just being a green deck has just be got, gotten so much better. Like, But she I is but she is greening and still gets to play all those, uh, most of those things if she wants to. But the thing is, is you're probably not playing your deck like that. Like, you're not playing a Troxa Beast Whisper creature matters. Like... I, I don't really see that being a thing because then she just doesn't play well, well with the deck. No, 100% because a lot of creatures themselves deal with plus one counters. Like, it's well, not. Yeah, I, I, I get that. Yeah, totally. Yeah. So, like, you're but still I... getting the creature benefit with the good colors and it helps your strategy and you get the degenerate green blue stuff that helps for yeah, it. I just think that she's not innately generating a lot of value compared to some of the cards that are on this list. So, I think that she's, like, easily. Like, right. I, I can't. I, can't I would say that then she's at least top, like the top of A. Oh, yeah, she's great. I mean, the color pie, like, it's just putting a counter on everything nowadays, 
like compared to like what you're playing against is just not insane. Like plus like talking about what the strategies are doing, like plus one plus encounters, decks get really bodied by interaction. That's like good interaction. Like because you're really valuing like pumping certain creatures. As where tokens are go wide, so like if it's not board wipes, like it's a lot less resilient. Well, plus they just got Adrix and Nev. Like, keep in mind that most plus one counter decks are looking to more combo than just go plus one counter swing. Oh yeah, I understand that. Like, you know, keeping out the fact that like, you know, most of these decks are degenerate combo decks, mm. like, cause all of them are gonna have cards that they can combo with. Like Kali has combo cards, like World Bo World Bo Yeah. You know, the World Gorger Dragon combo. But like just saying like as a card and the strategy that she's doing, like a lot of other deck strategies are just very ahead. Uh okay, so Brea, this card's pretty fucking ridiculous. This is like a top tier CDH deck right now because of the color flying. Like, being a Grixis deck right now, it's just amazing. Okay, he's coming back. Perfect timing because we're starting it. It's all good. Something happened, so he had to get, he got delayed. Uh, so, what do you think about Brea? Do you know what Brea does? Yeah. yeah. Now, if we're I going off the same type of argument, I would still only stick her in A because if you're looking I, for. I agree. I totally agree. Because she's that same type of thing where, like, she's the good color pie, but her effects herself don't contribute as well to, like, the strategies that the decks want to do. Mm -hmm. Like, you still have... it's She's a sack outlet, but she's kind of an expensive sack outlet. She's only an ETB one time that makes things. So, like, unless you build decks and stuff around it. Now, like, you're in the great color pie for, like I said, if you want to play artifacts, those are the <laughs> colors you want for artifacts. I can't really see you wanting green for artifacts. Totally. I totally agree. See, this is a CDH deck. Like, so we're going to talk about this outside of CDH yeah. standards. Like, because I don't want to do that. Because Brea would be S tier in CDH because she's playing Grixis. But what I also think like, what makes CDH CDH is the cards in the in the main board and less what the car card does oh, totally. itself. Because she's, like, just playing the LED, like, Underworld Breach, like, Dockside Extortionist combo. Mm -hmm. And the reason why she's so good is because when you make infinite treasures, you get to use her as a win condition. So, like... Her making infinite artifacts makes her really good, so she definitely stays in A. But, like, if we're talking about her compared to, like, this next one, like, Joyra, which I think is, like, an easy S tier, because no matter how you make this commander, this card is so fucking stupid. Whether you're playing it in a deck, whether you're building it as a commander, we built, what, like, a $70 version? Yep. That's the one on the turn six? Yeah. Like, this commander is ridiculous. Too much value, and it hits too much, and you're still in the two best colors for, like, his, some of the historic cards that are free, yeah. like zero-drop artifacts. Caring about artifacts, you know, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so, I, Joyra is definitely S tier. Also, like, the you-do-a-thing draw card with no limitation is always gonna, like, easily be, like, a hard S tier. So, okay, so remember, this is the most played, line, yep. like, the most broken or whatever. So, Kalia... Like I was making the argument. I might say B. I think this is B or C because she's Fuck that card. Oh, hello. Yeah, welcome so back. What do you think about B so far? What up? So um, Joyra put Ness. So Bray and Atroxa got A. Keep, it, keep in mind we're doing this base of not as much so what you run the main board because like the main board you could literally play sometimes different commanders with the same exact mm -hmm. deck and it would perform just as well. It's more so how much well the deck strategies that like they do in a non CDH format. Yeah. yeah, not CDH like not the top tier of what this deck can do. We're still considering combos because people do still play combos at like the non CDH level. Because Brea would be an easy S if this is CDH. Didn't Brea see vintage play because she's so busted with artifacts? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So she's definitely an A tier because her and a Oh, hands down, she wins by two. She's so good. Yeah, but like when we're talking about Joyra, like Joyra is also busted because she's drawing whenever a historic permanent enters, which yeah, is artifacts, okay. sagas, and legendary creatures. So like you're drawing off the best cards in Magic. I think you can make especially that. the yeah. the way you're playing her, which is an artifact tribal. Also, Kalia has just kind of fallen from grace. This is what we're talking about. We right lost. Now. They With lost Kalia, Iona. The it's the attack. Yeah. So so they do have two really annoying cards. There's a Rakdos card. There's a Rakdos demon that uh, Master of Cruelties. No, no, no. Yeah, well, I was going to talk about Master Cruelties. So there's Master Cruelties, and then there's a new Rakdos Demon that also makes someone sack half their permanents now. Uh, that is, like, another Master Cruelties, but, like, just annoying. So she's really fallen from grace. Like, I, I almost want to argue to put her in C tier, they but I think, like, how good the Angels, Dragons, and Demons are nowadays, and we just keep getting better ones, this card can easily stay where it is. Right I now. think her big fault comes that she lost Iona. 
and that she's still an attack based strategy and sure she has flying but attack strategies can get brick walled really quickly also uh, her i think her biggest problem is that she's not a green deck playing a creature strategy i think another large problem with kalia is she's boltable obvious how strong she is like there are some other commanders that like you'd have to read a little bit into or understand other interactions but going in blind against kalia you'll read this and be like i should probably not let this do anything like so easy to interact and with she you. has no that's the issue she's like, got no butt kill... yeah. shock yeah, no. shock kill kills her time. shock kills yeah. her but she doesn't die to doomblade <laughs> <laughs> well, never mind, Tom. Um, never that's mind, S right, tier. Right. <laughs> if that's our evaluation, oh my God, Riku's so fucking broken. Doesn't die uh, to Doomblade, dude. IR is the best commander in the game. Right, I think Riku's also A because this is such a degenerate commander. Being able to Riku's copy, the teamer all, one, right? Yes, you're probably in the best colors for this period. Like Derek, imagine our instant sorcery tribal deck, but with this as the commander where your commander's copying fucking spells mm -hmm. and creatures that enter. No matter how you're building this, whether it's just teamer ETB matters, or like teamer play Avenger of Zendikar and make two copies. And then I have a doubling season, so it's doubling, doubling. And then I'm playing Agents of Nev with the Sakashima out with Ariko, so I'm making double, double, double of copies. Like, this card's insane. It's because uh, it's everybody's better. having fun, Tom. That's why. We think this is better than Brea in a casual setting, I kind of think. Yeah, because uh, also, if you get any of the mana double... a lot of combos, though. But so does this. Dualcaster Mage, Derek, with a mm -hmm. copy spell with this. Dualcaster Mage, it just you just win because you make a copy of Dualcaster Mage. Uh, yeah. it, Is Brea good with it? In like a casual build? I feel well, like it's totally. too... Artifact matters with four colors. Yeah. Do you know how many combos you have for that? We just talked about the Dockside one. Like, it, there's so many combos. There's also the, um, the Oryx Salvagers. Like, that... There's a lot of combos for Grixis and Esper Artifacts Matters. Like, some of the most played decks that you're going to see down here are actually Artifact Esper decks. Like, yeah. there's one really popular one. I don't know if it's on here. There's, like, the Sphinx that Dom used to play that, like, puts an artifact out. Oh, with. yeah. Yeah, it, you'd be surprised how, like, there are so many artifact combos that you can play in these fucking combos. Because the thing is, you get the artifact stuff that that has, so like, it's, a, it's support that you get in those colors is what helps. Now, I like, so also we're not... now... Yeah, go ahead. Go because ahead. we're also saying we're not trying to focus too much on what the deck can do and what she could do compared with it. So, yeah, she is a way to, to win on her own. But it does need a bit more setup than just, like, playing one card. Right. Also, talking about Riku, like... With the amount of things that let you bypass the non-legendary rule, like Jared, do you know how body double works with yep. red, like it's so fucking stupid. We like, have it, we have Sakashima. Hypothetically, yeah. if we had someone who didn't know how body double worked, oh. how would it? Oh bullshit. What the card is this like a new card or is it just another yeah. copy? Oh, oh, Jake, you missed the one set that added five new ways to copy legendaries. Oh, no. is is Body Double the one that can be a copy of a Planeswalker or a creature and it loses legendary? No. no. What's that one? Because that one's stupid. Spark Double. Yeah. Oh, no, not Body Double. It's, what is it called? Double Major? Double Major. Oh, yeah, Double Major. Right, right, right. Oh, wait, because that's a, that's a spell, too, so you can copy that with that dude. Copy yeah. target creature spell you control. It, it isn't legendary if the spell is legendary. So it copies it on the stack before it resolves. Do you know how many cards, like, Strixhaven gave us? Like, and then we got Sakashima, which is, like, the fucking king of making so that things are not... Because Sakashima, Jake, on the bottom end is a Mirror's Gallery, which no one likes to play in Commander. But when it's also a Spark Double, and then you just have the upside of having a Mirror's Gallery effect, then we're talking about something completely different. Anyway, let's keep it moving, because I want to spend... Mm -hmm. You want to spend okay, too much time on this. So... Scarab is actually pretty fucking good. It's it's a zombie tribal deck. I think that's really the only way you can build it. So I would still stick it in B because it's still a very limited strategy, just like Kalia. Like you have to play that kind of deck, or it doesn't really make much sense to play it in any other way. Yeah, well, but it's... no, there's like a ETB, like just good, like Arcaeo, like just good, like Ravenous Chupacabra. Like there, there's definitely a deck that you play where you just it play just a doesn't lot of ETB that just doesn't feel as good because then you're kind of no, like. It's not. It's, it's like not. it's making it's like paying a power down version of the deck, and then you might as well just play a different commander. All right. Yeah. No, I totally agree, Jake. You got anything to say about Scarab God? No, I think it's just as B as it gets. Very good effect, good colors, and just 
does, it does exactly what the card says. Make yeah. zombies and replay shit. It's great. Yeah, because zombies, I don't think go in the A tier anymore, but like B tier is good because they have so many fucking combos. If there's anything me and Derek know is the amount of combos and blue blue uh, black that zombies have. It's yeah, absurd. they go crazy. Uh, Laura's like a D tier commander. No, Laura's probably a lot higher. You think? He's he uh, is. Laura, I give him a clean C personally. He. Clean. Clean. He wait, is, what's the second he, effect that you can pay one if you do... Wait, you draw a card? Yeah, he draws a card when you gain life. He's probably the best life gain commander. That's actually not that bad. Because thing, he also gained life when he's in the sideboard. You basically play... Most decks play him in... You can either build he's him in a... pretty annoying with Aetherflux Reservoir. You get to play him. He's So here's the thing about him. You can play a lot of different versions of the thing. And he's very versatile. So that's why I think he's definitely higher than C. So he plays there into... There's a lot of life gain in... So, so keep in mind uh, how is if you would play him, um, you play him as whoops, as either a aristocrats deck, which is one of the second most played type of decks in the world. He's either a life gain deck, which is one of the third most played types of uh, of decks in the world. Uh, so and like the, that's the two things he, do, he really is really Actually, good at. Yeah, for that, I kind of want to push him up like here to be completely honest, because he's very he's got a lot of value. You also numbers. have the. I didn't realize that he drew a card when you. you one, like he is also yeah, actually if you're playing any of the life gain shenanigans like to win the game like he's perfect for that yeah and, or gary you know like mm -hmm. it, it's great so uh this is uh the it's a group hug card I, i'm not a huge fan of this card maybe the fact of the colors that it is pushes it to see oh, but i don't i don't like giving players value I think the colors it's... all it's missing is black but i guess that's enough <laughs> yeah it's yeah. just, I, I just don't like this card because it just gives value to other players. I, I get why people like this because this is like the quintessential group hug commander until Kenrith came out. Uh, which I actually don't think Kenrith landed. Oh, no, no, he's there. Uh, I was like, I'd be shocked if he wasn't there. But uh, this was the group hug commander before Kenrith happened. And I'm not a huge fan of group hug decks. I don't think that they <laughs> ever play out well. Like, they just don't. Like I kill group hug players on site. Exactly. And it's my God given right. And this isn't even me just giving, like, my personal opinion about me not liking group hug. It's just, even when you let the group hug player go, they're usually just making the better decks better. Like, I play against group hug decks with Gishath, and I'm like, I'm casting my commander on turn four. What is happening right now? Yeah, or imagine, like, the decks that struggle to keep value, and you're giving them value. Yes. I, yeah. I, don't, I don't like that. Zach tried to play, um, he was playing group hug against my Zender Split no Kun deck, and I kept a very greedy seven. And that is of course unless he plays a worm that lets everybody play all non-land permanents from their hand onto the battlefield and i win before i even get to play yeah that's so well, immediately he was you just put all your permanents onto the battlefield i'm like all right uh lab man for nega fleet mana vault mana crypt and i'll play my commander on turn one and i'll flip infinite coins like what do you <laughs> Like I, I just the problem is it's it's like too polarizing. It, it's it's a catalyst for decks that didn't need a catalyst. The totally. decks like like the red decks that the whole thing is that like they're gonna run out quick. They don't have this gas, but they're gonna have this explosive beginning. Well, what if you're pouring gasoline on that explosion the entire time? Other decks and like that are though you have to build your deck and sacrifice some things. And getting rid of what you sacrifice and giving it to the field when not the when the same effect doesn't respond the same way to every player is just insane to me. Yeah, like I, I, I couldn't play a deck. I couldn't play yeah, a group hug strategy. I, I, totally did, I would just get anxiety. Yeah. Or imagine playing against a deck that is like a draw. Like imagine playing against Tatiova, Tatiova, and you're like, cool. You're gonna let me have an extra landfall and an extra card. I'm That's cool with that. That's what I'm saying. You want to give me two extra green mana at the start of my turn. I'm gonna draw an extra card and I have an additional land drop. What it, you're playing my deck for me. I need uh, yeah. no pieces. Like, Mark, so, so okay, next so card, Marchesa. I, the funny thing about this card is this card's actually really, really, really abusable because there's a lot of things that you can give counters. So th this uh, has the ability that when something uh, has a plus one, plus one counter on it and dies, you can bring it back. So the funny thing about this is there's a lot of... Doesn't she also... Can she steal creatures too, right? No, it's... Uh, so it's the other creatures you control have dethroned, which means you have to attack the creature with the highest life points and they get a counter on it. But whenever a creature you control with a plus one counter on it dies, you return it to the uh, battlefield under your control at the beginning of the next end step. So you get to abuse the ETB effects from, from attacking. So, so it's like you're either attacking the this person with the highest life 
and then they. There's also ways to abuse the counters in these colors. Mm. Like giving things counters is actually pretty easy. Like it's not hard to do, honestly. Now the one thing I feel like about the bad side of dethrone is say you have the highest life total. Now your your commander doesn't work. Well, half right. of it doesn't work. Hopefully, yeah. Hopefully, you're playing ways to give things counters because it's probably there's probably some easy way. Like I've seen uh, Jimmy play this on the uh, command zone, and this deck has one. Oh yeah, there's a lot of ways to give counters, especially yeah. like. So you still you also still run into the problem with like okay you you're attacking people to try and get for to activate them, but it means if the attacks go through, you potentially lose dethrone. It's still workable and doable, and you get and very abusable in the colors, but I think it's going to have struggle a little bit like you do have to I, kind I, of build I, more around it it's it's a little bit yeah, more yeah, linear yeah. than it is like open i think here put them in it this is put them in a and let's get past it the next one or s or I just get it and let's move on no he's, i don't think he's s i wait, i don't I, wait i have i have one word to say eminence and now the ur dragon <laughs> <laughs> oh so oh shit, Eminence. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. I still and think we got the original Eminence. Yeah. Before it was Eminence, which people complained about and didn't like it, and they're like, "Yo, guys, watch this. We'll do it again." And, and, Edgar, what if Edgar we Markov. So I think that these decks are still better, and I think Edgar Markov is is placed properly here because the problem is, I guess if you're, the thing is that like it. Depending on how you're building the deck, if you're building it more casually, this commander is ridiculously good. The way that I built it is not amazing in a four player, but man, could I kill people on turn four in 1v1. Like, it was mm -hmm. dumb. But alright, so the Ur Dragon. Five color dragons. It depends how good do you think. Like, dragons have been steadily getting better and better the more they get printed. Yeah. I think that this would end up, like, around where either this ends up, like the zombie, like the tribal, kind of, or. Because don't forget his other effect is he puts permanents into play equal to the amount of attacking things that attack also, right? Yeah, which is mostly going to be dragons, though. Doesn't he? He does another thing. Yeah, it's when he attack, uh, or is it when it deals damage? Or what is it when we're... No, it's when it, whenever one or more dragon you control attacks, draw that many cards. Then put a permanent card from your hand on the battlefield. This card's fucking gas. It's going to take Yeah, you. okay, yeah. That yeah, so that card yeah. is the, the easiest AI I've ever read. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> no, not yeah. you. Yeah, that, yeah, that's... The, uh, the oh, and, uh, not that a true card. Yeah, and all... He, go ahead, Derek. And, there, and he also is... I forget he's the re a reduction as well. I think he's better than Edgar, also. Uh, I, just make... Yeah, making... They cost two less, right? One less. One. Yeah, but even so, like, have you seen the, the, the dragons that they just showed? And this is going in there? Old Nar? And that yeah. extra, like, come on. Yeah, that that's what that's what I was gonna say. I just feel like the other. Like, hey, Tom. Hidden. We get to run that the double attack trigger with your dragon too, because he gets. Oh my god. Because you get to draw double that's the cards so to put two permanents into play. And the Teferi sees us in sight. Let's go, buddy. <laughs> it's over. Double, double, double. It's over for them all. Uh -huh. But dragons are just through the end of time. However long magic exists, are gonna be getting stronger. Like, there's no question mm -hmm. about that. They're always, they always the dragons, angels, good dragons. And dragons, and angels, and dragons angels, demons, humans, Tom. zombies. Those Claire. are like... Yeah. You know, yep. you know, it's also funny we have been thinking about. It's really easy to make non-legendary copies of legendary creatures now. Just saying. Oh, God, stop. Oh, my God. Can we, bo can we body double the... Or the... Yep. The Ur-Dragon? Like the... Or we get Sakashima, and we get Sakashima in it, and we get Spark double oh, it. God damn it. We could do and all those things. So many, there's also uh, some broken ass dragons, like Scion, the one that dumps things. Mm -hmm. He's yeah. even more broken uh, than Ur because you can kill people like really well, easily. Okay. So, Anamatu. see, I love that's Anamatu. Like... I think that her bottom half struggles a little bit because, like, you never I really. I, trying to give Probably stuff to. Somewhere around. She's just an, she's a really good ETB deck. She has combos though. But she not... has the uh, the Felinar Guardian. Yeah, she uh, she has the brood combo. She does have a yeah. ETB combo, but that's also like any ETB you're combo. You're the best colors for it. You're, you're yeah. the best colors for it. True. So that's that's a that's a bonus. You can easily tutor that combo, mm. like considering that you have blue for artifacts, so you need the altar, uh, and then like white also like and black like 
you have the best colors for it. So I think that that alone and how good the ETB cards are in these colors at least keeps her there. But I I know what you're saying about like how the fact that it's a minus to blink things sucks. And then, like, you can also do the Miracle deck. Like, people have tried that, but it's just not really good. Uh, so, it's fun to play some of them in the deck. Uh, Wind Grace, this I'm... is a Lands Matter deck. So, so I'm between A or... Either here. I think it's the back of A. If I think I think it probably is, too. Can, I, can, I, too can I make an dude. argument? Can I make an argument? Sure. This guy got printed, right? And I think he went from a, a B to an A with just this guy. <laughs> oh, my God. I knew that's and the then, card you were gonna get too. And then Derek, you get to play he, he, No, don't forget. Don't forget, for Lord. Don't forget when Grace brings back two lands to play. Not oh, one. Oh no, I know, I know, I know. And then like he gets to play the Jelly Bean, you know? Like th this, it gets to play that one that makes eggs, like the dragon. Mm -hmm. it, there's a lot of really good cards that it gets to play. There's also some Landfall Black Demons that like get counters and like deal damage too. Like it, the it's Obnixilis. Yeah, Obnixilis. Yes, he's actually pretty expensive. I think. Uh, so this one, I I don't even have to argue. Like this one probably goes because Enchantment Tribal is bonkers right now. I might even I don't argue know if it it's better than Land. I think that Anger might be the back here, and then either this is better than Wind Grace or it's just somewhere oh. here. I think she's better than Ur Dragon. No, I think that this... Ballistic. Well, hold on. Remember, she only draws once, but the the tribe, okay, no. like the Enchantment. I... Look, I understand, but the enchantment no. deck itself plays like twelve ways to draw when shit well, happens. Also, enchantments are some of the strongest things in Magic. That's why they make so many easy ways to deal with them. Because if you let enchantments run away, they are basically unstoppable. Right. So that's only and my like, only argument yeah. is that it would be higher, is because they get to run probably people one. People don't really play mass enchant removal at all. And you can. see what they happens when you. Griff. Yeah, exactly. You're right. And enchantments have become one of the best tribes. It's one of the most played decks right now. Like, Tuvasa is one of the most popular commanders in the game right now because they keep printing fun enchantment cards like Shark Typhoon. Get at me. So, like, even if you don't play, okay, like, you could, you could play him, play in the, I would, I would put them, push them up. I would probably say better than Ur Dragon. I kind of, it might even be better than Brea. I, I feel like. I think it's tough to beat Brea from here. I Brand got he's, black, man. If Tuvasa still... had if, what if Tuvasa? Imagine Tuvasa was like, I don't want to talk about it. Actually, yeah, Bray is mm. Bray is probably better than Tuvasa though. I was like, can you imagine if we could somehow squeeze black into Tuvasa's colors? You don't even want to actually. Just you the lose the mana cost. I guess that hurts this card. Mm -hmm. I, I do agree with you. Yeah, like if this was black. Yeah, that's. I don't even want to talk about it. Okay, so I'm gonna play enchantments. This is and another. I... This is another uh, zombie commander. Yeah. So she's three colors. She actually get to play a lot of the black white ones, which are really some of the good. Land white ones, and then she has a draw effect too. Like yep. I, I think that this one's actually better than Scarab God. Yep. And she dumps them into the graveyard. You discard and it too. And you get to play weird stuff like Filth Wonder that like go mm -hmm. in the graveyard and do weird things like that. And then also you get to play like the you get to abuse Alhamrit's archive and draw more cards than you're discarding and gain a million life, and like now that Thought, you know, we just got the, the Teferi's Aegis Insight, mm -hmm. and the Thought uh, enchantment got reprinted, so it's cheap now. Like, I think that this is easily like somewhere around here, because it generates so much value. Tom, you what? could also um, go infinite ETBs and deaths, because you get to play Edgewalker. Oh, right, yeah, the Edgewalker. So yeah. you can Edgewalker Gravecrawler. So, yeah. yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah. Okay, so this this fuck boy. Uh, I mean, <laughs> the thing is, I don't think he's S tier. I... You're missing a lot of good. Co you're missing colors. That's where his big downfall is. Mono black. Yeah. Even though you can combo off with him a bunch, like it still costs a lot. And the thing is, it's really easy to fizzle. When I think he... He, he's here, I cannot put him in C tier. It's so easy to win in black. Like it's a joke. Like. I... I feel I think... like you're a little aggressive on how low he is. I feel like he's probably... You don't think, I don't think he's better, better than, than these three. You don't, you don't think Crick is better okay. than... When you're uh, thinking Esper about... Zombie. Okay, if we're taking Crick as a card, not as what deck he's being played as, because that's what this is kind of about. It's not about them as a card. It's what kind of strategy he's going to be played as. If we're thinking about that instead of Crick in the 99, I think Crick in the 99 is like here or here. But I think as a commander, he's not doing a lot. Like, playing out your entire hand is not really doing a lot. Like, which is where Kalia falls, you know? 
like where you're doing a lot of like being able to play things really well but you're not generating actual value like playing things and making mana yeah it's technical value but you're not drawing cards or making one ones for free or being a landfall deck and this does draw cards drawing yeah. cards drawing cards generating value drawing i just cards. realized i realized an error that i made i my brain was thinking vilas oh no, oh vilas yeah vilas no. is is an a tier easily i don't think he's on yeah. here though yog moth is but i don't think vilas is actually on here yeah no uh, so Anji, I think that this is too weird of a deck to make top tier. Without making this a CDH deck, this commander is not insanely good. Because like I, I think self discard decks like madness in itself is only so good. We tried to make this deck for fun, and it just did not play well. Like this is C or D easily. Like this deck does not play well. Only at the CDH level does it play well because you play all the madness cards, World Gorger Dragon, call it a day. That's the only thing keeping it C tier for me. But the colors you have to play, like black's not terrible, but like it's it's trying to have like a fun discard theme, but like it really only wants the madness cards. I, I think that if this was a CDH list, she'd probably be B or A, but I think that she's C. I don't know what you guys think. No, I kind yeah, of agree. I don't think she does much by herself, like at low yeah. level at all, or regular. Because like you look at a lot of the madness cards, and they're just kind of okay. Yeah, they're really not great. That's why they keep printing some randomly. They just keep putting them out to try and help it. Uh, okay, her. Th this this girl's pretty crazy. Uh, so I you are say you are like, you are creature based strategy. So, and you're also cheating creatures in the play. Now you don't. Also, there's a lot of changelings that abuse this effect because you just play changelings and let them die, or like that new artifact that makes uh changeling. Oh, it makes everything. Uh, the, the yeah, makes, it, makes it makes everything. everything eggs. Yeah, like, it, there's a lot of ways to make changelings now. Like, oh, there's been a lot added. Uh, and you're a Naya deck, so you have a lot of draw, a lot of power, easy way to win. But is it better than... It's definitely better than these. Uh, but so you want to put it above these, So you're though? just you're just good creature tribal deck, and if you really think about it, because... Like, it get up here? It, I, it, I don't think it belongs in A, but I, I saw... Did you watch the Command Zone episode with uh, when Ashlyn plays this? Yeah. It, I mean, if you have bombs, like... It, no, it, so, look, it, the deck very well can go sicko mode. And also, Skull Clamp. Yeah, you know? Skull... Yeah, it's... Also, it's, wait... It was stupid. Hey, Tom, you know what's funny? We have a new card printed for this. Uh, harmonic... Uh, the, the Harmonic Prodigy, because she's a Shaman. Oh, the, shaman. Oh, it triggers cool. twice. Where do we want to put this? I think it's B. I don't know if it creaks into A. It's pretty no, fucking No, it's good. definitely not A. Because the thing is, because you're still building a creature-based strategy, so you're probably doing the creature strats. So what happens when you go sack egg? I, I hit a land or war elf. Oh. Or I well, hit... you don't have to play those. You can just play, like, the land... You can play the land ramp. Yeah, I don't, think, right, you would then, then, I don't think you would play... Okay, then... Play, like, then you, Tom, yeah. okay, then you hit eternal witness with nothing in your graveyard. And then you just well, get well, a card. It's whatever. whatever. Yeah, it's just gonna happen. I still think it's a short that's card. that's what I mean. It's it's still good, but the thing is, you're still playing like it's an uncontrollable. Yeah, it's uncontrollably good. I think this 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 I mean, not... is better than these. I think, and then I it think it fits happen. right in the middle of the road. I think right in the middle of the road is where this is because I think these are actually better. So this but I do I do get it. There is ways to combo with this card too, where you make everything eggs and then have something that when something dies, a thing happens, and you just keep sacking creatures and make things, but. Uh, other than that, oh my god, this is, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, do we really need to even talk about it? Like, it, this is easily, even no matter what level you build this commander, like, it, you could just play through your entire deck, even if you're not a CDH deck. And just the power level of being able to play the top card in this colors means you could be an enchantment deck, artifact deck, like, any non-creature instant sorcery deck. Like, anything that isn't, like, a Voltron deck. It could be a Voltron commander if you feel like it. Any way you yeah. want to play it. Yeah, so it's because of how open and up it is, and it lets you, and it helps with anything. You, it also lets you play them uh, as it had Flash. So yeah, literally any non-creature strategy you try to play, it, it, it works for you. You even build... Also, even in casual, they're playing Storm. So like, it's really easy to win with Aetherflux Reservoir with this card. But maybe she's here, like maybe she's not as good as like a Joyra. Like maybe she just gets to the top of A, because... It, it's not like, okay, like if she's on her own and like, you know, it, she doesn't generate. 
I guess it's technically generating value, but, like, you can hit a land and, like, kind of whiff. But she's not, like, constantly generating but in the, value. But in the, same, in the same sense, though, but whether, like, Captain, you could also end up drawing, like, three lands or artifacts you can't play for this turn, and it just stops right. there. Right, but it's less likely that that's going to happen. Like, that you can abuse more than, like, maybe having lands on the top. And besides, but, besides, there's also a lot of either while you're playing enchantments, planeswalkers, artifacts, or spells, really easy ways to like scry and mess with the top of your deck. So even if it does fizzle yeah, out, there's a ton of ways to even if you don't like the top to just draw cards. There's also, like so she many ways she has the sensei's cool. top any mana reducer combo, which is pretty easy to assemble in these colors. Yeah, because th there, there there's auras and, and enchantments that enter that scry and draw cards. There's planeswalkers that do it there's artifacts that do it when they enter or mill if off the she top is s tier she's like an s minus for me like yeah she's not like generating immediate value like a lot of these s tier commanders are like i kind of really want to put her at the top of a but i i can understand that it like she could be used for a lot of things like and there's probably ways to combo with her that are pretty easy but the easiest way i know is with sensei stop mm. You're also, uh, you could also even play equipment with her, and it would still work because she's in the best color for all those strategies. Well, but some of this isn't that like the same thing, kind of like a Troxa, where like I, I would put her below just, a Troxa. Yeah, I feel like she just ends up around here just because she's an enabler. Like she, she helps like get the card, but she's not, she's not like the engine herself. You know what I'm saying? Oh, like, okay. Kind of helping the engine, like these are, you know. As where like these are more enablers, like these are actually giving you the value. You know what I'm saying? Like True. she's technical value, but it's not like real value. You know? But when you build the deck and the deck starts to move, then she's looking really hot. And that's the same with the Troxa. So okay, so Kieran, he's actually pretty fucking good. Like there's a lot of shenanigans. Is he? That is Matt he the Rhino Kieran. dude? Yeah, but the funny thing is, is he plays a lot of cards that copy commanders or like steal them and make copies and then like you get to keep the cards so like there's a lot of weird cards in red that abuse being able to like uh keep the token or not like where like you make a copy of something until the end of turn and then like you get to attack and make a copy of it and get yeah. to keep it so Just, like i think it still, fa still falls and has to attack though which sometimes could get brick walled really quickly he's a two five you know four players yeah, yeah, I think he's either at the bottom of B or, like, the top of C. But, like, token generating in those colors is amazing. There's a lot of really easy ways to win, like, because you're in Boros, you know, with, with the green. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I still think he's a he's a, a B commander. I've seen him do some shit. Like, eh, I like the, him, thing is, the thing is, is usually you just find a way to, like, make him indestructible or, like, you know, just... Or not that, like, he's a 2-5. Like, he doesn't really die to a lot, to be completely honest. Like, he's he's got a chunk. And even if he dies, you just replay him, and you get a you get a token with it. Because it's also when it enters. Mm -hmm. When it Boy. enters. And then, Derek, you have to think of all the things that make copies. So, like, with Helm of the Host with this card, like, you can make copies of legendaries that you're playing. So, like, Matt has, like, Aurelia or, like, you know, just some really degenerate legendaries that he plays. And he plays a lot of, yeah, Doom Blade, yeah. Uh... Uh, yeah, so I, I think that this strategy is fine, but is it better than any of these? I don't know. Oh, because there there's still tokens, and tokens still fall to a lot of weaknesses to a lot of other effects as compared to just mm -hmm. putting permanents into play with the stuff above it. So I think that's a fair spot for him. Yeah, okay. I like, I like moving Kalia behind gear, gear, behind them and Crick. Like, I feel like Crick and... They're, they're both... I think they just do more. Like... Obviously, Kalia is great, but like yeah, I think the limitations. But the thing is, it's like the angels, demons, and dragons that you can play in these colors are pretty fucking good. Yeah, I get that, but like in general, like that—that's just playing like big bombs that each do like their own oppressive thing. Whereas like the the Naya one, he's just a machine. Like he just you yeah, get to true. populate, you get to go wide, you could do a token strategy, you can get doubler doublers, so you double populate to make the effects even better in those colors. You have yeah, all she doesn't really get that. You're That's right. true. She doesn't get to explode any green. further than her base. And level. like I said, this is falling because it's not a green deck playing a, a creature strategy. Yeah, and, and this is green. It's a good point. Okay, say you slam just a really big dragon. I'm kind of not afraid of one big dragon. Or, like, one big yeah. angel. Like, I'm scared of Master of Cruelty is putting me to I one. I mean, Iona used to be a thing, but, like, you know... But, like, in the most there's, part... There's a couple of 
Uh, and this must immediately leave or we lose. But in general, like, just the option of being able to choose what you make a copy of and do it every turn or even have those extra values, I just think that accumulates so much more than the one time he busts the nut, kill one person with Master of Cruelties, then get killed himself. Right. Okay, so that's the same argument for this with Kadena, is where you're playing a heavy creature strategy that is also allowed to play green. So I think that that immediately gets into A, just for the sheer fact that, like, you've seen how mine plays, where I'm playing, like, all of the, when a creature enters, it works because morphs don't have a name, so, like, all of them work with Guardian Project and Great Henge and everything like that. So, like, also it's playing Beast Whisperer, plays, what? like, Crater Roof as a win condition. It does have a lockdown with the, uh blue creature that can flip up and copy anything and the thing that makes people not untap their lands and well, also like well let's know. let's forget about what's even in the main the main board what you can run just her on herself you get a draw you get to play you're playing a face down strategy you're, you're playing the the morphs and there's are, and the morphs are, are all really have good. a lot of really good effects because a lot of them are really powerful when they're actually morphed and you have ways to set them back down just looking at just the morph strategy in itself and and you also have a draw engine, so I would I would I'm put it here. I'm kind of here yeah. between the Ur or the. Is it better than a five color dragon deck? I don't know. I mean, they might just kind of be in in their own like little pocket next to each other. Because the thing is, is Kadena could probably win quicker than the dragon deck because it's gonna take a while for them to get gas going, even in a five color deck. Like, because the commander is a lot. Like, yeah. I think the only thing holding the Ur Dragon de back is his mana cost. But the thing is, is being able to play green in a five color deck with a lot of creatures means that, like, the deck's probably going to be good on its own. Like, very similar to what this is trying to do. Also, morphs are really annoying. They interact way well. And also, I get to play a lot of manifest cards, which are really strong, mm -hmm. like Thieving Amalgam, uh, like Primordial Mists, uh, uh, Dragons get Whatever. to burn. Dragons get to burn pretty, uh, pretty hard though. Yeah, dragons yeah. do go burn. Yeah, yeah, that's why I'm saying I think dragons stay here and Kadena stays here. But I think she's easily an A because the one problem with morphs is having to pay the mana cost for them. So this is completely negating that. And how many th ways do I abuse this effect where I'm playing like nine ways in the deck to cast them at instant speed? Like, yeah. I'm playing all of them possible to be able to abuse the effect because this is once per turn, but if you are able to cast creatures on your opponent's turn, now it looks like I'm playing a Storm deck because I have, like, a Beast Whisperer and I'm drawing two per, and then I have a Thieving Amalgam drawing me, like, a million cards. Like, it's it's great. There's a lot of good Manifest cards, a lot of good Morph cards, and a lot of the effects are really annoying. Tapping lands, swapping creatures, destroying artifacts, mm. killing creatures, countering spells. Yep. Like they do bouncing things. Th there's like a more. There's like a more for every control effect. Anyway, yeah. There's, yeah let's, so let's keep it that's moving. That. So Z uh this is a wheel deck. This is really good actually. Uh, but it's, it's still like a group hug kind of. We're reeling everybody kind of thing. It, it does make the opponent draw. Uh, but that's yeah, only but if you. This is a lot less friendly. But it's only if you do combat damage and you don't even have to do that side of it, and it still yeah. is a good wheel commander. Now, if you want to play it like not as a wheel commander, I think that's where it would drop down. Because if you're just doing it just for its generic effect, you have to attack with it, you have to get the damage in, and now they're drawing cards. And you're making 1-1 snake tokens, which, I don't know, is that all that strong? But this it's only whenever an opponent. So, like, this is normally a group hug deck also is the problem. Mm -hmm. So, like, uh, even just, like, I guess if we're now, thinking of it as the wheel commander. Now, here is wheels that much ca really casual anymore because like half the wheels now are like getting really up there yeah i don't think he's an a i think he's he might be higher than the egg egg girl the, um... i think he's like back here because he just makes one ones like i get you get to win with crater hoof but like i feel like he's easily managed you know like i i, I don't know i i feel like these uh, he's definitely better than kalia i think uh, I think Scarab God has to get knocked back, honestly. I think Scarab God might be worse than those. And I think, like, the Naya strategy might be better than Craig. Yeah, and uh, also, really, he really is played as, like, a, as a, uh, a group HUD deck more than, like, a wheel deck. It's like Windfall, but then a lot of, like, group huggy effects. Yeah, I think that that alone makes him better than Scarab God and Crick. 
Just because you're green. So the ways to win are easy. And you're making a million creatures. This guy's actually really fucking cool. The whatever. First off, he combos stupidly easily. So he's already in B because of that. Because he's just a mana rock for two. So freed from the real and uh, Penmanzora immediately just combo with this card. And make infinite uh, mana. And then the entire deck is about playing X spells. Like Hydra's, uh, which there's a lot of cards that have gotten printed that involve when you cast something with X, it does a thing. Mm. Believe